What's going on, guys? Welcome back to The Fudge Effect. I am your host, Mario Malave. Welcome back. I know it's been a minute, about a week. I've been busy with school. I've been busy with life. How surreal is it that my Bengals are going to the Super Bowl? I have said that sentence at least once a day, every day since Sunday. It is now Thursday. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's off to a strong start. Hope everyone's you know, kicking ass so far this year. It's what February third now. It's uh, it's nice and early in the morning. Very excited to start my day off right. But man, oh man! First off, let me say a few things. One. Ever since I was a kid, I've been a Bengals fan. For those that. No football. You know what I'm talking about. For those that don't, I'm going to tell you a little story. So since I was a kid, my father is a Washington fan. You know, you want to call them the Redskins. You want to call them the Washington football team. You want to call them the Commanders because that's their new name. Call them whatever you want to call them. My dad's a fan of that team. Always has been my whole life. And, you know, as most fathers do, they try and make you a fan of of that team that they started uh, as a fan of. And I remember one time I was taken to a preseason game at Gillette Stadium, I think it was, and I remember vividly cheering for the Patriots decked out in Redskins gear at the time. And it was just really funny. I just It just never really suited me. So I ended up picking this Tiger team, the Bengals. And I never knew their history in the 90s of how bad they were. I eventually, as I got older, I learned the hit, the history and the culture of their winning seasons back in the 80s. I learned the history of Paul Brown, you know, one of the founders of the Combine. Started so many systematic schemes that go on in the NFL to this day. You know, rest in peace to him. You know, he's been gone for a while. But his son is the owner of the Bengals now. His name is Mike Brown. And under his ownership, the Bengals have just been a laughing stock. The only thing, though, is that I know my team more as winners, not losers. So people always call them the Bungles. People always make fun of them to me. Whatever it is, all the time. So just picture a kid falling in love with this team. And his whole life, everyone says your team sucks. Then you'll never, you'll never. Ever, ever see them go to a Super Bowl. That is what I've been told my whole life. You'll never see them go to the Super Bowl. They're trash. It's embarrassing. Whatever you want to say. And we're in the Super Bowl. It's just so surreal. It's so surreal. I, I'm still waiting to wake up from my dream. It's, it's so surreal. Like You guys don't understand. I, I've... Listen, I still listen to podcasts about the Bengals, sports, read about them every day. It is a part of me. You want to be my girlfriend? You want to be my wife? You got to understand. A lot of my time, I'm reading, I'm listening, I'm watching Bengals stuff, I'm watching sports stuff. Sports are just a part of me. I love sports. And for all of this listening and obsessing over this team... Feeling like I'm a part of the team, that's how much I pay attention to the team. Studying the draft, studying prospects, studying the, the business beside, uh, behind the organization. Why they're making the certain moves, why they're signing certain players, not signing certain players. Why they're not trading, why they did make trades, whatever it may be. Just every single day, and I finally get to say they're going to the Super Bowl. Now let me give you a little, a little story. The... The... So I made a bet before the season that the Bengals would win more than six and a half games, okay? More than six and a half. To me, that's free money. People thought the Bengals were going to win six games or less because they thought we'd suck. Listen, I saw the potential in this team. You could ask anybody. I saw the potential. So I made this bet, plus six and a half, bet the over, and then I won. You know, I won, you know, I won a couple hundred bucks, whatever. 
And this year, I also ended up winning my fantasy football championship. Thank you. Thank you. Nah, but I ended up winning my fantasy football championship. And I go to try and take the money out of this betting company app that I used, this, this website, right? I go to take out the money. And it says, okay, f- first off, there's five or more options in terms of how you can withdraw your money. Just different ways to withdraw your money. And I have a friend who told me about this. Uh, this company, this app, whatever you want to call it. And I also listen, I heard about it because of the podcast I listen to. One of the podcasts, they always, uh, for an ad or one of the sponsors, they always say this place. So, you know, I, I think they're trustworthy. And they are. You know, everything worked out. But my dumb ass picked one of the more stupid options by... Had, by doing the one that said minimum fee $500, okay? $500 minimum fee. And I end up taking the fantasy money that I won. And <laughs> listen, listen, I wouldn't be telling this story if I went bad. Actually, maybe I would because it's embarrassing as shit. But not in this case. Not in this reality, okay? So I end up taking this fantasy money that I won, putting it in, right? I put it in. For the five hundred dollar uh, withdrawal fee, that's the basic minimum withdrawal fee, and I go to withdraw the money, and all of a sudden it says invalid. That's what it said. It said invalid. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to think. And it said invalid. And all of a sudden, I said, you know what, let me let me go into one of these live chats with one of these assistants or whoever. And, you know, hopefully it's not a robot or a bot. And I end up chatting with one of the workers there, and they ask for my account information, whatever. And they ended up pretty much saying the rules of this place are any money you play or any money you put in, you must play. So I'm thinking, there's no fucking way. I might lose all my money. Are you shitting me? And listen, I'm not a betting person whatsoever. Just a casual better. Once in a blue moon. And it's only usually from, from my team, Bengals. And I was just like, dude, there's no fucking way I'm about to lose all my money. Like, this is... Come on. Seriously? And I talked with, you know, a couple of my friends. What should I do? And this was like out of Uncut Gems. My friend, one of my friends goes, Dude. You should bet on this game. And I was like, it might be, yeah, I might bet on this game. So I end up taking 75% of that money, put it money line, which means straight up, on Bengals Chiefs. And I ended up putting the other 25% on the Super Bowl. Because why not? And so, go big or go home, right? I mean, how often do you see your team... Be in the AFC Championship, be in the Super Bowl, whatever the case is. So I ended up betting on the game, and I don't know why. I never had a doubt you could ask anybody. I was as cold as ice, as even keeled as a sensei. But excuse my dog if you heard him barking, whatever. But I was as even keeled as can be, and all of a sudden... The Bengals go down 21-3. I'm not thinking about the money. I just want to win the game. I'm not sweating nothing. And the comeback happened. History happened. I had my whole town, everybody and their mother texting me, congratulating me. It seemed like I it seemed like I just got married or something. That's how many people were texting me, congratulating me. Like I just had a kid or something. One of the greatest days of my life. And if we win the Super Bowl, it would be even more. But, yeah, like I said. The Bengals came back and won. So, you know, I ended up cashing out. I said, give me, get out of here. It was it was crazy. It was crazy. Maybe it was just destiny. Maybe it was luck. Maybe I wouldn't be telling the story if it didn't happen. I ended up winning a few few bucks, whatever you want to call it. You know, I could still win more in the Super Bowl because I still have some left in the Super Bowl. But I went up and I'm done. Calling it. Just a complete... Could have been accident, meltdown, whatever. Luck was on my side. You know, knock on wood. Thank God. And uh, that was absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, like I said, 
And I'm super happy. Life is good when the Bengals are winning. It's uh, it's Thursday, February 3rd. I hope you're all enjoying this so far. I hope you've all been enjoying my content, whether it's on TikTok. Listen, if you have TikTok, please be sure to give me a follow. You can either look me up by my name, Mario Malave, or you can just search up The Fudge Effect. Either should come up. I will be posting more sound bites on TikTok and YouTube eventually. I'm still working on this. I'm busy with school and work, but I'm also like still trying to learn the the ins and outs. Give me a break, you know, I'm still starting off. But like I said, follow me on TikTok, follow me on Instagram, Mario Malave underscore. Please be sure, seriously, I'm trying to build this thing one step at a time. I really appreciate the support. Please be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. I can't stress that, stress that enough. Please like and subscribe. You know, follow me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can catch me on any of those three platforms for the most part. I think I'm also on Google Podcasts, but no disrespect to Google Podcasts. I mean, the big three is the big three. You know, what are you going to do? So, like I said, Bengals won. That was crazy. School's been going well for the most part. I just started intramural basketball. I'm the captain of this team with my with my boys. Nice 2-0. and This first team we played, man, first game, first of all, we were out of shape as a mother. It was crazy. Not, no disrespect to mothers. It's just a saying, all right? All right, take it easy. But we were really out of shape. We were down by 10. It felt like the whole game, and we ended up rallying, coming back and winning. Second game we played which was the other day, we played this all-girls team. And apparently it was the soccer team. And I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous because those girls I know were definitely able to run laps. Laps! If they wanted to around me and everybody. So maybe they played basketball, maybe they didn't. But regardless, they're going to be running and we're going to have to keep up pace with them. And I understand that we're men, biologically we're stronger, big, you know, bigger bone, whatever you want to call it. And I was a little nervous, but I'm also kind of timid when it comes to that shit. I could be an asshole, be like, fuck that, I'm a body, I'm gonna fuck him up, drop 40. Nah, nah, I, uh, I kind of get a little timid because I don't want to be that guy who just sweats and slobbers all over everybody because I'm really competitive. When it comes to women, I try and have some respect. But then at the same time, it could be like, oh, what, you think you're too strong for us? You think you're too fast or too good for us? And that never happened, but I'm saying it could. So it's kind of one of those weird places. The The girls were were pretty chill, though. So some of them were kind of cute, not going to lie. They're pretty chill. You know, we had a good game. They were beating us for a good amount of the game. The first half... I think we were only up seven, but they still scored a shit ton. And then in the second half, we opened it up, and we ended up pulling away. For, so we're 2-0. and Hey, hats off to the girls, man, for being able to come into an intramurals league. And I, I understand it's co-ed. I honestly didn't know that before signing up. I don't really care, though. You know, I'm welcome for anybody to play. And But for them to have an all-girls team knowing that there's a greater chance than not that they're going to be playing constant boys teams... And to be hanging in there, hey, hats off to you ladies, hats off to the girls. You know, I respect that. We took the dub. It was great. This year has been off to a great start. I also have said this since high school. And don't judge me because picture your favorite thing. You like hockey? Picture your favorite hockey team if you're a diehard. Picture your favorite artist, your favorite um, song, your favorite drink, your favorite whatever. Right, I am a diehard fan. I don't. I can't explain that enough. I understand. Once I have a family and responsibilities, I understand. Right now, and I honestly anticipate this carrying into when I'm older because this is the one thing I care about the most and ever has been in my whole life is this team. I plan on getting a Bengals tattoo only if they ever win the Super Bowl. That is the. I mean, let's say they never do, and I'm like 50. I'm like, why not? Maybe that's different. But if they win this year, I'm best believe I'm getting one. I don't care what you think. I'll probably get the logo and the Super Bowl tattoo, and every Super Bowl, you know, I'll get another uh, trophy, Lombardi. Yeah, Lombardi trophy tattoo with the along with the logo. So it'll be like a nice little tally, whatever. I don't care what you think. Whoever's listening, whoever's watching, I appreciate you. But if you don't like that or don't mess with that, 
Sorry, I'm getting it. Don't know what to tell you. I didn't even realize this. I drank an absolute shit ton of wine during the game. I felt like I was on cloud nine. I had a wonderful, wonderful, tremendous time. It was absolutely amazing. I, I, I'm, I've been having a great week. I've been having a great year. I hope everyone is as well. I honestly thought the age 21 was overrated, but honestly, I'm kind of enjoying it right now. My ass needs a haircut. I know that's a little random, but uh, if you're watching, sorry about the hair, man. I got to get a haircut. I might grow it out. might keep it the same. I still don't know yet. Uh, I'm in public speaking. I don't know if I've said that. I definitely have. And we're doing an informative speech in the coming days, coming couple weeks, and we can talk about something we know about, and I, as much as I would love to talk about the Bengals and football, which is my passion, like, that is what I love, I love the Bengals, right, like, that is, if someone put a gun in my head and said, name this about the Bengals, I probably could, unless it's the assistant coaches, I know a good amount of the assistant coaches, but not all of them, anyways, came down I've come down to the Bengals and what it's like taking a gap year and I think I might want to talk about that a little bit right now because first of all it'd be a nice practice for my public speaking assignment and second I just think it'd be nice to kind of reiterate kind of talk about what it truly is like to go through a gap year if you're a parent you're listening to this you'll kind of understand that the point of view side of where I'm coming from, the side of what I had to deal with in my gap year. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about that. So in high school, I, how do I say this? Just think for a second. Think to yourself, you personally, the listener or watcher, whoever, just think to yourself if you truly enjoyed high school, right? And truly think about who you were friends with, circumstances you were involved in, certain outcomes that happened that you didn't want to happen, certain situations that you tried to take control of but you couldn't, whatever it was, okay? And that mixed that with a little bit of anxiety that you didn't know was anxiety at the time that you thought was normal to you, right? Whatever it is, you did sports, you were involved in clubs, whatever it is, okay? That was me. Just, you can think about your perspective, but I'm just that, that was me, okay? And I played football all four years. No matter how bad I wanted to quit at times, I was faithful and loyal to my teammates to the end. Whether I was good, bad, atrocious, I did not care. I worked my ass off. I wanted whatever was best for the team, my friends, my teammates, and I had a lot of pressure with that on my plate because I put in so much effort towards football, and that consumed most of my time, but I don't know when this started. As far as I can remember, though, in high school, man, every day I would get on the bus, and AirPods weren't around, and it's crazy to say that. I sound like an old head for saying that. AirPods weren't around. AirPods came out, like, 2019. Let's just say we're talking 2016 here, only a few years. So I'm I'm getting on the bus, right? Early as hell in the morning, 7 in the morning, you could say. And for my earbuds, I could never listen with two in at once. I would always have one, whether it's the left or right, you know, sort of dangle over that ear. Some people did that to look cool or just because they were chilling. For me, I did it because I was so anxious, so scared that I would be breathing too loud on the bus. Think about that, what I just said. Scared to be breathing too loud on the bus. It's not normal. To me, it was. Because, you know, some people told me I was skinny. Now that when I look back, I was definitely much skinnier than I am now, <laughs> clearly. And I just didn't, I, I never saw it. The size I'm at now, size I was at my senior year, whatever. I always thought I'd just look this way. And I'm okay with that. I'm not body shaping myself. I, I love how I look. I, I don't mind. I mean, obviously, I would love to improve and over time and stuff. You know, that's, that's you know, all good and all. But, you know, I'm chilling for the most part. And I was just so scared of, I don't know if it was being fat shamed. I don't know what it was. 
But I just always had that pressure when it came. And I love music. That's one of my favorite things ever. And I just had this constant pressure of having to deal with that in its own, right? Now, not a big deal. Nowhere near as much, but I couldn't talk to girls. I couldn't. I'm not gay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gay, but... And there's nothing wrong with being gay, but I'm not, I'm not gay. And I just couldn't do it. Just the thought of how... Ever since I learned about sex ed, I just never since middle school and all throughout high school just couldn't really see girls the same and knowing how high schoolers hook up and you know they you know a lot of them might be having sex losing their virginity whatever it is at such a young age I mean I just couldn't see girls in that same light anymore the same boat as I saw my guy friends you know lots of girls say why don't you just talk to girls how you talk to your guy friends and I just couldn't do that I just couldn't and that was a very hard thing to go through. So, dealing with that, dealing with the uncertainty of the future, it was all just a perfect storm waiting to happen, just waiting to boil up inside of me. And year after year, guidance counselors would ask what I want to be, what I want to do, what do you, what do I see myself doing? I'm like, I have no idea. I just kind of shrug my shoulders and would carry on with my day. And here there's other people around me, the same age as me, filling out applications, saying what colleges they're going to go to, saying, saying, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, saying what they're going to be in life. And they seem like they have their lives figured out. And we're only like 16, 17. And I'm over here thinking to myself, how did you figure this out? Do you have a great parenting system, support cast in your household? What is it that you have or understand that I don't? And not to call it on parents or anything, but from what I've learned is that a lot of parents, and I understand this because my parents want the same for me, every parent wants what's best for their child. And lots of parents kind of push the ideas onto the child. Oh, you should be this, you should try this. And they kind of push them into college, which is, you know, it could be a good thing. As long as you're not setting up your kid for tremendous debt or anything, hopefully you're not. And my parents would ask me casual questions about college, and I would just shrug it off. That's what that's what I did. That's how, that's how I got by. I don't know how it kept working. I would just shrug my shoulders, and I'd get by. And it's just crazy to to think that it just came to a point where the college fair happened. Talked to one person about plumbing. They were at a trade school, and even then, I was like, dude, I don't want to fucking talk to you, all the respect. I don't want to be here. I never told, I never said that to the guy, you know. But that was just one person I, I talked to, and a few weeks later, a month later, I got all my peers wearing college shirts at the school and apparel, the schools they're going to, the schools they're going to be repping, and here I am left in the mud, not knowing what I want to be, not knowing what I, what I want to do, graduation's right around the corner. And it just really sucked. I always felt kind of left behind and left in this constant area of stress and uncertainty. And at the same time, I was too prideful to want to ask for help. I was the guy who tried to be the best possible friend to carry on the burden of trying to help you get through whatever stress you're going through. Guy doesn't like or girl doesn't like you, I'll help you get over it. You know, you want you want me to help put you on a girl? I'll try my best. Whatever it is. I try to I try to be as loyal to my friends, to whoever. I try my best to help people. That's what I enjoy doing, helping people. But it just came to a point where it's too much for me. It's too much. And that all boiled over all the way leading past prom, which is a story of its own. That was a shitty night. Shitty uh, experience for me. We're not going to get into detail about that, though. Uh, you know, shitty, shitty graduation prep. Nothing against the teachers, nothing again. It was just a really shitty situation that really just led me over the top. I'll explain a little bit of what I mean by that in, in my class. I'm not going to say it on camera, though, of what happened that day. And I, there was just one night. So leading up to graduation, I have no plan, no idea what I'm going to be doing. And all of a sudden, I'm home. The idea kind of festered in the back of my mind for that week. But that day, day before graduation, I knew my ass wasn't walking. So, yeah, 
before I get into my gap year, yeah, that's right, you heard that. I didn't walk at my high school graduation. Explain it to my mom. My mom had to tell the family. It looked, I don't want to say it looked bad on her. I mean, maybe it did. I hope it didn't. Because it was my choice, my decision. She didn't see it coming. I totally blindsided her, blindsided my grandparents, rest in peace, God bless their souls. Blindsided my brother, blindsided everyone in my family who was expecting me to walk. And first of all, I'm not, as much as I love doing this, making videos, kind of taking command, sometimes one of my friends or some other people, as much as I enjoy that there's just times where I mean sports is different because I was in a whole new element it was just out of my world when the Bengals won that game but for people to like when it's your birthday or when I don't know I don't know when, when times when you are being crowned or awarded something times of accomplishment I just get my body just naturally gets kind of reserved and I don't know if the words humble humility I just kind of go thank you appreciate it and try not to be boastful and brag about it and it was just kind of also one of those situations where it was like I don't want to you know I dealt with enough shit in my school and I want to take control of my own path so you know what fuck you guys I'm doing this for me. I'm not walking for me. You guys, you guys didn't do my fucking homework. You guys didn't put in the countless hours I did in sports. You guys weren't there for me when I was at my worst. Not certain people. Just like as a whole. As a whole for my grade. And I just said, fuck you guys. You know, just in my head. Just fuck, fuck that. Like, I'm walking on my own. I'm doing my own thing. I don't. Oh, nothing to nobody. So I didn't walk. And it was a really big deal. Really, really, really big deal in my school. I never told uh, many people. And, you know, I, I've, I, I'm i telling the story now. But even then, not everyone's going to be hearing this. So even then, it's still kind of a low-key thing. Uh, but when... When I first had that summer break leading up to what would have been fall semester of my first year of college, I had no, no applications filled out, nothing planned, no future, yeah, no future plans or end game, end goal, destination. Nothing was set up for me. I was on my own, uh, other than my family would not. You know, I ended up going to therapy that summer. I ended up having to go through this whole phase of just learning to accept that not everybody's going to be involved in or a part of your life, that not everything in life is fair. I knew these things. It's one thing to know. It's one thing to feel. And I kind of felt the reality of where if you're not, if you don't think positive, positively in life or if you don't do anything to benefit you or try and stay on top of your shit, I kind of experience what that's like or to not ask for help and to have though that fear, that uncertainty, the lack of support bottle up and eat you alive. I felt that. I went through that. And that's why I hope nobody goes through any of that and people do ask for help and get the right help they need. And I was totally, I was just totally lost and totally in a uncertain place. And it was scary. It, it, it was scary. It was really scary. There was times where I thought about just giving up on life. Not that I was going to hurt myself, but just, I was like, why, why can't I just call it quits? Why can't, why can't there just be a, a push, push off button where life just ends? That was my mindset. Why, why, why can't I just hit the button to quit, quit the game, and that's it. Game over for Mario. I genuinely thought that. And there was something inside me that said, you can't quit. Can't do it. I don't know if that was my conscience. I don't know if that was God. If you believe in God, I don't know if it's, I don't know what it was, but something just told told me to keep going. I don't know if it was something because I felt like I owed it to my family and friends or whoever. 
but I never quit. Never quit. And this was years. This is a cut like three years ago now. I'm in a way, way better spot. I'm sorry to bring this mood down. But, you know, sometimes people need a reality check of how things can be versus how things should be. If you're feeling the way I'm describing right now, you should pause the brakes and take a minute to breathe or something. Seriously. Life can get overwhelming, but it should never get to a point where you genuinely consider giving up. That shouldn't be an option. Obviously, it should. I mean, obviously, it is an option, but it should never be what you result to. Never give up. Never quit. Never. You just got to believe that there's a bigger plan. And that's why faith helps for me. You believe there's a bigger plan? Instead of saying, why is this happening to me? You just think, what is this teaching me? As soon as you think about that logic, as soon as you think of the whole fake it till you make it, tough times don't last forever, tough people do. You start churning those gears, then life just becomes that much easier. And it's hard. It is hard. The, I, the, what I just said seemed like a simple two-step program. No, it's not. It's hard. Ther my therapist helped. They asked me questions that I didn't know the answers to, that I eventually tried to figure out the answers to, that eventually led me to being proactive and active about certain things, certain circumstances in my life. And that was, that was <laughs> a very challenging time and period in my life. I'm not, I'm not going to hold it or, or, or lie to you. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to cap. <laughs> and when summer break started, my, my mom and I came to an agreement. She said, if you're going to, if you're not going to go to school, your ass is going to be working. And as much as I hated the idea of working and having to do stuff, I said, okay. So I ended up working at a restaurant for, for through the fall and winter. That was, that was cool. Then I ended up working for uh, my uncle's company. That was cool. That was great. And I think those are the only two things I did. For the I worked... Pretty much a whole year, though, and then it just came to a point where I figured out I wanted a job, not, I wanted a career, not a job. I, I just woke up one day, and I said, this is, I don't know how people who come from other countries, and they have no choice but to just work a job, because they don't know English, and they can't go to college, and they can't get the right education, and they don't have the money for the education, so they just work a job, and they live off that. They There's some hard-working people out there, hard-working, badass motherfuckers, who I've met, who I've seen, and they work their tail off, and it's normal to them. That is normal life to them, and it's easy to them. I'm not going to lie, man. I might not live in a fucking mansion, but I, you know, I live in a good-ass circumstance for the most part. I'm not complaining. And in the, I don't live in a mansion, and I'm still fucking lazy. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not... It's, it's not like I'm a multi-millionaire where I can just sit on my ass all day, and I'm still making money. I'm not in that circumstance whatsoever, and I'm still lazy at times, for, for the most part, whatever you want to say. And there's people out there where every day they wake up, they'll work a 8 to 5, and that's nothing. And they'll do it five days a week, every week, for every month, and take one week off of vacation, and that'll just fly. And even then, those people could possibly be thinking about work. And it's just ridiculous. And so I just realized I wanted a career, not a job. And even then, I don't know what I want to do for a career. If I could, if this could be my career, you kidding me? I'll take, I'll do this ten times out of ten. People want me to make podcasts for them, where they just listen to me speak. They listen to me speak to other people. I'll do it. I'll do. I'll gladly do. It. I I love doing this shit. You kidding me? I love doing this, especially for you guys. And I. I was lost, and I eventually, like I said, realized I wanted a career, not a job, and I ended up talking to my boss, helped me write a letter of recommendation. I only applied to one in one school only, CCSU. I go there to this day, just made the cut, made it in the fall, and that was all she wrote. So there's a lot of key pointers and stuff I'm missing here. And I know that. I shared you with you what I wanted to share. <laughs> Believe me, lots of drama and stuff. But I'm sure you don't want to hear that. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, the gap year, man, here's the thing. For schools, for my school, every year, 
excuse me, they would bring in four or five-ish former graduates from our high school, and they would all sit down and, ex and share their experience of the colleges they're going to and how much money and debt they are, how much the scholarship money they're getting. I'm kidding. Whatever the case is for them. And they would just share their stories. or And then they'll have one person from the military come in and talk about their military experience. And even then, it never seemed like the teachers really cared about what they had to say. They wanted to just bring them in to talk to the students. And even then, a lot of the students didn't care what they had to say because they were dealing with their own shit. But my one problem is before I even took this gap year and made my own decision, not and I didn't have a choice. But first of all, parents, if your kids are stressed out and they're trying to explain something to you, Especially as seniors and juniors, hear them out. They are on the verge of breaking out to where they want to be independent. And it's very close, closer than you think. And if you have a senior telling you, I'll be willing to work, I don't know what I want to do, I feel stressed, I need to cool off, let them cool off. They can still go back to school. There is a, like a 30-something-year-old man in one of my classes in college and he's still working his ass off to get an education. Education can, after high school, it's pretty much over. College is a choice. It's not a necessity. It's a choice. Depending on what workforce you want to get into or what places require certain degrees. And even then, lots of places now are looking for who can show me that they can do what I ask. Not a fucking piece of paper, okay? That's just how it is nowadays, if I'm just being honest. And... Like I said, if you have a kid and they're telling you I feel stressed, whatever, and you come up with an agreement with them and you let them take a half semester off, half a like a year off, how much how much time they need? Listen to them, genuinely listen to them. If you think they're scared and you could talk to them into letting them go to college, by all means, that's cool. As long as the kid's happy, as long as they're in a good situation, but don't force nothing onto anybody. All right. And I hated when the teachers always said. Don't ever consider a gap year. You'll never want to go to school. Listen here, motherfucker. I'm not saying names. I'm in college. I'm in college. I took a year off, and even then, my birthday's so late, I'm still the same age as those people who I'm, I'm in the, the grade with now. People I graduate with in high school, they're about to graduate this semester for college, for the most part, most of them, most of those people. Me, I'm in my third year. Possibly, I could possibly graduate in a year's time from now. But, I'm in college, why the fuck are you telling people to not, why are you telling people to not, to consider to take a gap year? And I'm sorry if I'm swearing, if you don't like swearing, I'm sorry, I mean, I, I tell it how it is. I try and be respectful, but for the most part, you know, this is an unfiltered place. I have certain rules, certain rules, but, you know, this is, this is a... This is a cuss zone. People are allowed to cuss. Not cuss free. People can cuss. Anyways. I, I had guided college teachers telling me never do a gap year. You'll never go back to school. And I genuinely think, sure, the longer you do get away from school, sure, that can happen to some people. They can lose motivation and want to go to school. But if they have a good support system or parents where they say go work and they get tired of work, then they'll realize, oh, maybe I do want to go to school. I don't want to do this. That sounds like a good option to me because that's what I did and it worked. I wasn't scared straight or anything or scared stiff or whatever it's called, but worked for me. I was tired stiff. <laughs> um, and yeah, everything worked out. Everything was good. Everything was great with all that. Like I said, I'm in school now. I'm chilling. I got... You know, class in a few hours, because like I said, Thursday morning, up and at it. Hope everyone's up and at it today, too. And I'm getting a little mellow on this Thursday morning, but hey, listen. Everybody, I want you to, like, like, you just heard a bit of my story. And how it can be for you, versus how it is for you, versus how it should be for you. It could things could be bad for you right now, and I'm telling you, I'm not saying compare yourself to other people's lives. It could be a lot worse. It could be a lot better. Try and find your happy medium. Try and find 
the try and find whatever it is that you know could help you be more productive help you kick you into another gear find that spot read go for a walk work out do something do something not nothing do something yeah i just said a lot there i'm going to be giving a little spiel about my gap year for my public speaking class has to be within about six, ten minutes. I'm sure I'll be able to cram that somehow. I'll make it way more, way much more concise and neat and all that. I'll leave out all the nitty gritty stuff. <laughs> but yeah, it was good to talk about. It was good to talk about. I got some uh, some guests lined up, so you're not gonna be hearing my ass talking all the time. As much as I do love doing this. Damn. Damn, I can't believe I have class now, man. I'm still waking up. But, with that said, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And remember, please, like, subscribe to the video. Hit that notification bell. Whenever, and tell anybody you know, any of these videos where I'm talking alone, I'm not posting about it on my Instagram. I'm not. It's up for you to listen to these gems on your own. I'm holding you accountable to listen to these. You want to listen to the guests? I'll post about the guests. That's what I do. That's the main, that's the meat of the podcast. And listen, there's going to be lots of more stuff branched off from here. Got to give me time. Still starting off, even though I did start in November. I'm still learning. I'm still learning, people. I'm still a rookie, all right? Give me a break. But like I said, with that said, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. F you know, follow me on the the audio platforms. Tell everybody. Tell spread the word. You know, cause I'm here. I'm here. My presence is now known in the state, country, world, cause I'm on, now on a public platform. Spread the word. Tell your friends. Have your friends tell their friends, friends, and their friends' mothers and grandparents and their nieces and nephews and their friends and cousins. All right. Please, I really would appreciate that. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. I hope everyone is continuing to work hard, grind, stay happy, stay motivated, stay blessed. Everyone's doing their thing. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you all soon in another video. And with that said, ciao for now.